Hi, I'm Steggy from Elgato, and this is an introduction and overview to Elgato Wavelink. Wavelink is our audio mixing app that comes with Elgato Wave microphones. Wavelink allows you to add multiple hardware and software inputs and allows you to output them to two independent mixes. Now, that might have sounded like a bunch of jargon, but basically, imagine all of the audio sources you would normally have in a stream. Your mic audio, your game audio, your Discord or other team chat audio, and maybe some music from YouTube or Spotify. And these are just sort of the standard ones. Now, before Wavelink, all of these audio sources would just be desktop audio in your encoding software like OBS. In order to change volume levels of these different sources, you'd have to manually open up the different apps, change the volume, and then reminimize them, which is tedious on its own. But when you consider how you monitor this audio, you realize that the audio levels that you monitor via your streaming software's monitor feature is tied to the same volume levels that your viewers hear. So there might be an instance of you playing a game that comes across as quiet in your headphones, so you turn up the volume in OBS. But then your audience says that the game volume is too loud for them. So then you have to raise the volumes of your other sources to overpower it so then they can turn down the volume completely. But then your mic might be at its max volume at the current gain setting, and so then you have to up the gain on your mic, which adds background noise. It's a nightmare. Now, audio mixers have improved this kind of workflow by allowing you to physically route audio into a hardware mixer through audio cables. And some mixers even allow software audio inputs as well, so you can control the channels independently. So what Wavelink does is, it replaces the physical audio mixer with the virtual one. Because when you think about it, all of your audio is either plugged into your computer or coming out of your computer through software. So do you really need a separate device for this when you can just have an app that sort of unlocks this ability? So this is what we did here. Okay, so let me show you around the app so you can see just how easy it works. Now, first things first, this app's audio engine is actually powered by Wave microphones. So you do need a Wave mic to use this app. And if you launch it without the Wave mic connected, you'll see this screen. So we'll want to plug in the Wave mic, and now you'll see the software start to really power up. Now, you'll see the homepage of the app right here with some audio channels already added. Now, to make things simpler for the video, I'm just going to remove the channels so we just have the first mic channel. To do this, simply click on the channel's drop-down arrow and click Remove Input. So we have the first channel here, which is the Wave microphone channel. It's already set up with the Wave mic added and can't be removed. Basically, the work is done for us here with this channel. And if we click this down arrow here, we can see some of the features we can control on the Wave microphone. You have three different faders here. The first is gain, which is how sensitive your microphone will be to sound. Think of it as the mic's volume. The higher the gain, the louder your mic will be. Then you have the headphone output volume, which is the volume level for the headphone jack on the back of your Wave mic. And then the third fader is the mic PC balance, which Basically, when you have your headphones plugged into the headphone jack of the mic, you can hear your zero latency mic monitoring, or you can hear the sounds coming from your PC, or both simultaneously. And with this fader, you can decide how much of each you want to hear. Now, if you didn't know, Wave 3 has a multi-function dial that can also control these functions. So if you control the dial on your Wave 3, you'll see the faders update in Wavelink. And if you change the faders in Wavelink, you can actually see the LEDs on Wave 3 update too. Now, Wave 1 just has the one function for its dial, so in order to change the mic gain or the mic PC mix, you will need to use the faders in the Wavelength gap. In this drop-down menu, you'll also see checkboxes for both the low-cut filter as well as clip guard. So for the low-cut filter, this will help filter out low-frequency sounds, so think of the faint hum of a fan or your central AC. This can help reduce those noises. And for clip guard, this is another great feature which essentially prevents your mic from clipping or peaking. So if things get a little loud when you're streaming, this feature essentially monitors your voice and if you get into the red zone, the mic will automatically duck that audio into an acceptable level which won't clip. Yeah, come on. Yes, nice shot for me. Perfect, yes. Oh my God. So moving on, let's add a second audio channel. I'm gonna add my browser audio as a channel. So to do that, I just need to click this plus button and then choose any one of the software inputs to add as a channel. Now, it doesn't really matter which one I choose for this. The labels for things like browser and voice chat just make it easier when you're linking them from your apps. 
We have a whole video explaining adding inputs in Wavelink, so if you want more information, I welcome you to check that out. So anyway, I'll choose browser here, and now I have a second audio channel in Wavelink. But it's not actually working. I have to tie it to an actual app for it to work. So if I press this button here, I'll be taken to a Windows menu that lets me select specific audio outputs for each app. So I'm going to go to Chrome here and set the output to Wavelink Browser. And now it's linked. So if I play something on YouTube, you can see the volume levels are playing in both the browser audio channel as well as the two mix outputs down here. Now let's take a closer look at the audio channels here. There are five components here. Your volume fader for your monitor mix, your volume fader for your stream mix, then if you click these icons at the bottom, it'll mute that channel for the corresponding mix. And then this icon which links the two faders together at the ratio that you previously set them to. So if I'd like to have my browser audio a little bit louder than what my stream hears, I'd like to have it like so. But then I can link the two faders here at the ratio I've set it at. So let's say I'm watching a YouTube video on stream and all of a sudden it gets super loud. Now I can just grab one of the faders and drag it down and both faders will turn down at once. By the way, shout out to Harris Heller of Alpha Gaming for suggesting this ratio lock for our channel linking back at CES 2020. Before moving on from the outputs, if we quickly add another audio channel here, I want to point out the bottom section here. This is the list of available hardware inputs you can add to Wavelink. So this is where you'll find hardware sources that are connected to your computer such as another microphone, something plugged into your sound card's line in jack, or slide capture cards such as HD60S Plus or Camlink 4K. Next, let's go over the output section down here. This is where you'll set up Wavelink to output your channel mixes to your stream and whatever device you want to use to monitor. So for the monitor mix, if you click this drop down menu, you can select which audio device you want to output the mix to. Now, one thing I want to mention about the monitor mix, the Elgato Wave microphones actually mix the audio channels to get best in class latency compared to other virtual mixing solutions. So if you want the lowest latency, we recommend using the 3.5mm headphone output found on the Wave microphone. Wavelink still gives you the option to output to any audio device, like my Corsair Virtuoso, but keep in mind there might be more latency compared to using the headphone port. In my case, I'm using Corsair Virtuoso as my headset, so I'm going to output it to there. Now, whatever channels I've added up here, and whatever the fader configurations I've set, that's what I'll hear in my headset now. And if I want to lower the volume a bit on all the channels at once, there's a master fader for the monitor mix right here. There's also a master volume fader for the stream mix too. And if you're wondering what these little ear icons are, it's so you can quickly change to hear what your stream output sounds like, so you can get a gauge of what your viewers are listening to during your stream. Now, to set your stream mix output, you'll actually just have to go to your streaming software of choice, and then when you go to add an audio source, you'll see Wavelink Stream as an option. So in OBS, I'll just add this as my mic source, and then my entire Wavelink mix is now in OBS as this one audio source. And when I need to change anything, I just control the faders and everything in Wavelink. Lastly, we have the settings icon here, which lets you control whether you want Wavelink to automatically open at login, as well as be able to check for updates. So hopefully this video shows you the basics on Elgato Wavelink. Be sure to check out our other tutorials on Elgato Wave and Wavelink on our YouTube channel to become an audio pro. And get subscribed to catch our new videos and tutorials to allow you to unlock the full power from your Elgato products. Once again, I'm Steggy from Elgato, and until our next video, good luck and have fun.